Good morning, everyone. So today I am going to talk to you about interview study videos and interview study tutorials. So let's get into it. Now, this is a little bit of a tricky one because, in my opinion, there are two sorts of prep video types or tutorials or whatever you want to call it. And I see one that is very common, and I see one that is not so common. And that's, maybe I should make a video like that, actually, now that I think about it. Oh, that, that's a later topic. Let's define the two types. So interview study question videos, or whatever you want to call them, basically these are videos that, per my definition, that are geared towards teaching you common programming interview questions that may come up in a job interview and their solution. Now, that's one. The other one is, are the sort of videos that I don't actually see that much of, which is kind of weird, actually. I've long ar argued that one of the... Like, it's just insanity to me. that it, it. I don't know why this is. We have an education system that produces students that don't actually know how to write a CV. My mother doesn't know how to view, write a CV. For example, they don't, when we produce students who have absolutely no idea how to behave in a job interview. And those are the other sorts of videos that I've seen. Basically, videos that are more geared towards teaching you how to structure a CV and what's relevant, how to think about these things, and how to behave in a job interview. Now, those are, I'll just set the context first and foremost, those are the sort of videos that I argue are very valuable for you as somebody who's going out to, to the workforce. And it's almost especially useful to you if you go into programming, because the way that you get hired in programming is a bit of a different experience than where you uh, than in other fields it's a or uh, there are other fields of course where the difference is a little bit bigger but let's I, I can just tell you this if you are working towards getting a job in IT that's a very different situation than working towards getting a job in say the service industry or something of that nature it's actually funny because when so, uh, this is especially true for recruiters and so forth. You can trust me when I say that no one, when they contact you, no one is actually offering you a job just because you're a programmer. You are offered the opportunity to get a job. So being, jo uh, being offered a job opportunity is really only being, uh, for the most part, being offered an interview somewhere. And you see, that's a very different thing from having, say, I don't know, what it used to be. And the, it used to be the case that you actually, you know, you get a job offer, you're hired, right? Or rather, that's not how it used to be, but rather, it's the way that you may be accustomed to, to getting a job. But for the most part, whenever somebody contacts you about a programming job, they're not offering you the job right off the bat. They're offering you an opportunity to prove that you you're somebody they want to hire. And that's where these other interview question, interview videos come into play. These interviews that you will face. And I kind of think that's it's, it's a little bit funny as well, because these, video, these study videos are really geared towards you just prepping for certain questions in that job interview. And now I would think that... The, or rather, this is my perspective on things. It wasn't all that long ago. I got a, a I, it's probably the best video request I've ever had. And props to you, dude. Like, I'm not going to mention any names, but he's, I had a subscriber who reached out and mentioned that I had been criticizing in a, in a previous video these coding interview type of companies who specialize in interviews and code tests and so forth. And I criticized them especially for front-end development because they have absolutely no fuck... Sorry. They have no idea 
what makes a good front-end developer. None so whatsoever. Ever. I've taken so many code tests and every single one of them is virtually just an algorithm, computer science, whatever. And what's the beautiful part about it is that if the company hires, like, when I finish the, co the coding interview and I submit it, they have absolutely no idea if I even know CSS. They don't. The code, they have no idea if I know it. And I kind of go, what the hell? An interview, that a coding test or a coding challenge that has no relevancy whatsoever. And I kind of just, I usually, and this is a good tip to you as well. If you are forced into that situation, just, just assume that the company doesn't know anything. Like use that as a bench, like, just as an indicator what type of company you are, you're applying for. Because if a company can't even be bothered to know what type of people they're getting into the company, you, odds are that you're going to go into an environment that, yeah, let's just say that, that that's an indicator of what type of environment you're going into. But what's interesting about these interview videos is that they focus a lot on these very specific questions that they try to prep you for. Things such as, well, Google interview questions where you have different mathematical problems or different type of engineering problems and then you walk through how to solve them. And this is kind of, to me, this is my take on it. That's kind of, in my opinion, to sit, like sitting down in a test for a t in in a test space, and this is actually what I think makes the biggest difference between a good student and a bad student overall. The good student is the sort of person who genuinely is interested in the field or in the in in the subject that they are studying, and they. They, they simply study the subject as a whole. They try to understand the subject. A bad student is the sort of student who studies the questions to get them right on the, on the test. There's a very big difference between that. If you're studying to just get the questions correct, you will not understand the subject. That's the big difference here. And I honestly believe that these interview videos, if you're watching them, watch them with a pinch, just take a pinch of them with a lot of, a big pinch of salt. Because trust me, if you think that by watching these interview questions that you are going to be ready to go into an, a job interview and feel that, you, trust me, you are going to get a big, big cold shower. Most likely you're going to freak out when you say, oh, God help you if you have to sit in me, with me in a job interview. Because trust me, I will dissect you if you, if, if you even, like, I, trust me, there's not a single job interview video out there that will give you the knowledge that you need in order to go, come past me in a job interview. Trust me. And this is not just true for me. This is true for any company worth its, worth its salt. The only reason these interview question type of videos could be useful to you is if, as I said, you're applying for a job where they have a retard... No, not, not that but they have a code testing company because these code testing companies are, they're crap, I'm sorry, they are crap. They are so bad at actually producing the sort of test that is going to give the company a good indicator if whether or not this is a good candidate. They will absolutely be able to produce the sort of t screening tests that might be relevant to just kind of flush out the people who don't have the necessary coding skills, like raw coding skills, because unfortunately we have those as well. I have a lot of experience talking to people who are programmers and this, sh and this is kind of where it gets misleading for a lot of juniors, because the thing is that you are not a programmer. You, there's different levels to being a programmer. If you can write software, then yes, technically you can call yourself a programmer. And unfortunately, there's enough of these misinformation type of people out there. Just the other day, I got a request from somebody who said, oh, I was making a roadmap for some some front-end development and so forth, can you look it through? And I kind of looked it through and I saw that this roadmap will not produce a software developer worth, its, worth his or her salt. 
this is there's no way that this can consistently produce somebody who's really good at programming but it had tons of stars tons of likes people loved it and all I can say is that what happens is that you give people a false sense of security and they go out into the workforce and especially if they, as I said, if you believe that these job interview question, job interview prep videos are going to help you and make you like somebody who will be hired, you're kidding yourself. They will not at all. They might give you some cool tips and tricks and maybe they'll give you some like some deeper understanding. I mean, I watch some of them just because I like to see the challenge and see how the challenge, challenge is solved. But trust me, none of these videos have ever helped me personally, at least, in a real job situation. Ever. Period. Never. And they're not going to help you either. Unless you are, you are extremely fortunate. Because it's like a crap, it's, it's like a stab in the dark. You have no idea to, if what company you're applying to and what their hiring process is going to be. And what's more likely going to happen is that you're going to be, sh you, you're going to go there and you're going to embarrass yourself. If you don't know the field, if you're not really a, like a real programmer, you are going to embarrass yourself. And you're going to add to this problem I'm trying to explain, which is that real programmers are forced through these screening processes because of people like you. Well, not you, of course, you, but people like that who think that they are ready for a job just because they've watched a bunch of videos and now they know some basic coding and they have practiced, they have practiced the questions. They don't know the field, they practice the questions. And then they go out into the workforce and, the and they speak the language, if you will, they know some of the terms. And now the company, because think of it from the company's perspective, what happens if they, they by mistake, hire someone like that? It's gonna be a big waste of everybody's time. And it might take a while before they realize that, hey, this person doesn't even know how to actually write software. So they have to have these screening processes. So this is, this is actually a big issue. You have, tons of these one i don't want to say wannabe programs but you have these inexperienced people who and it's not their fault i mean it's very tricky to know when you when when are you good enough to be a professional but they go out and they get sold the idea just as fucking the fitness industry tricks people into believing that you can get a six pack ab in in 2 weeks like it's not feasible guys you can't it's the same thing with programming. If some bullshit video, and I see this all the time, oh, how I became a, a web developer in two months. If somebody made it to be a web developer in two months, they're either lying or they have a really fortunate type of situation and I wouldn't hire them to save my life. I want you to know that that is an extreme corner case. And I would even go as far as to say they're most likely not doing real web development or whatever type of programming because no real IT company that I know of would take a risk on somebody who literally has spent two months learning programming because programming is much more tr it's much trickier than something that you learn in that amount of time and usually actually a lot of IT companies are a little bit more concerned uh, they, they're looking for skilled people because if they get bad people into the company it's it costs them a lot it's not just the money that they pay you but because when you produce software that is really bad it affects the whole product it affects their brand it affects absolutely everything that's why it's important to have good programmers so that you don't have to worry that the code base is starting to rot because bad programmers can actually cost you as a company a lot of money long term so interview type of videos, prep videos such as those, as I've mentioned so far, use them as a supplement to just kind of test yourself. But please don't think that they these are the sort of videos that you just buckle down and binge watch and then you're ready to go into a job interview because they're not. And trust me, if your interviewer is anything like me and or most likely they're probably even more skilled, they will murder you in that interview you will trust me this these pr these prepping videos they will not save you at all so don't risk it learn programming for real guys have a great day